You may know Berkshire Hathaway for Warren Buffett and their insanely high stock prices. But what exactly is Berkshire Hathaway and why is their stock price so high? Make sure to stick around till the end if you want to find out. Welcome to Hardy's Hobbies. So here's just some quick history on the roots of the company. Berkshire Hathaway actually started as two companies in the late 1800s. These were actually two textile companies in Massachusetts. One was Berkshire Cotton Manufacturing Company, which was incorporated in 1889. And the other one was Hathaway Manufacturing Company, which was incorporated in 1888. In 1955, these two companies merged to create Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett didn't even come into the picture until 1965 when an investment company that he led took full control of the company. While they continued their textile operations, they were quickly moving away from it and were investing in other companies. And by 1985, all textile operations of this company were liquidated. But by this time, Berkshire Hathaway is well established as Buffett's holding company for other investments and corporate acquisitions. Buffett mainly grew Berkshire Hathaway by buying stock in undervalued companies and eventually completely buying them out. While Warren Buffett owned many of these companies outright, he was very well known for allowing great autonomy for managers of these subsidiaries. Buffett really had a taste for insurance companies as insurance companies made up a good chunk of Berkshire Hathaway's investment portfolio. Some of the most notable purchases were Geico in 1996 and General Reinsurance in 1998. While the company owned several insurance companies, they also liked to keep it diversified at the same time. For example, they acquired Scott Fetzer Company in 1986 who is the owner of reference and educational publisher World Book and Fruit of the Loom in 2002, manufacturer of underclothing. One of the biggest acquisitions was the Burlington Santa Fe Northern Corporation in 2010 who owned the BNSF Railway for $44 billion. Despite having diversification in its investment portfolio, all of its companies had one similarity. They were all very safe investments. Berkshire Hathaway investment companies have almost always been drawn from established markets as opposed to emerging markets. This explains their significant holdings in several Fortune 500 companies like Coca-Cola, Apple, and American Express. These are some of the gems that Berkshire Hathaway owns. For example, Coca-Cola stock has increased in dividends for the last 55 years in a row. By investing in such safe and reliable companies, Warren Buffett was able to build a huge investment portfolio that is Berkshire Hathaway. But the initial stages of growth of a company are usually very fast. How was he able to sustain such high volumes of growth for such a long period of time? Well, for starters, Berkshire Hathaway has the biggest float in the entire world. Floats refers to the money that Berkshire Hathaway's insurance company subsidiaries have received as premiums but are yet to be paid out as claims. So technically, this isn't the company's money, but managers can invest this money in ways that they see fit. Berkshire Hathaway's float sits at over $100 billion, and not only is this the biggest in the world, but what makes it even more impressive is that just a generation ago, it was 50 times less than that at just $2 billion. This vast amount of money allows Berkshire Hathaway to quickly acquire dying companies and revitalize them. One of the best examples of this is Fruit of the Loom. Berkshire Hathaway bought Fruit of the Loom for a mere $835 million in 2002 when the stock had lost 97% of its value. Today, Fruit of the Loom sells the highest quantity of men's undergarments in the United States. Their vast flow is one of the key reasons that they have been able to sustain such high growth for such a long period of time. One of their other key reasons for success is their lack of dividends. What's ironic about this is that Warren Buffett is very keen on finding stocks that do pay him dividends, but his own stock doesn't pay out dividends. Logically, it does make sense to always take the money that other companies give you and never pay out yourself, but at the same time, it is still ironic. Berkshire Hathaway has actually paid out dividends once in its lifetime in 1967 when they pay out 10 cents a share. But even to this day, Warren Buffett claims that he must have been in a bathroom when the dividend was authorized. This lack of dividends allows the company to spend this money in other places to further grow the company. 
Despite a lack of dividends, it would be very short-sighted of an investor to shy away from Berkshire Hathaway stock simply due to that one reason. The stock price has skyrocketed over the past 51 years. In 1980, it was $275. Just 15 years later, in 1995, it went up to $32,500. And today, May 20th, 2019, it costs over $302,000. This is a track record without comparison. As an investor, the choice is pretty straightforward. Would you rather have a dividend payment or would you prefer to see a team who took a humble textile investment and turned it into one of the largest, most respected, and most financially robust companies to date? Business for Buffett hasn't always been rosy though. In 1975, Buffett and his investment partner Charlie Munger were investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, for fraud. The two maintained that they had done nothing wrong and that the only reason the purchase of the Wesco Financial Corporation looked suspicious is due to their complex system of businesses. Further trouble came in 1991 with a large investment in Salomon Inc. News broke of a trader breaking treasury bidding rules on several occasions. Only through intense negotiations was Buffett able to stave off a ban on buying treasury notes and subsequent bankruptcy for the firm. Not only did Warren Buffett get his own company through several major setbacks, he helped many other companies get through rough times. Buffett has acted as a financier and facilitator of major transactions. During the Great Recession, Warren Buffett lent and invested money into companies that were facing financial disaster. Roughly 10 years later, the effects of these transactions are emerging and the effects are enormous. A loan to Mars Inc. resulted in a $680 million profit. Wells Fargo, of which Berkshire Hathaway bought 120 million shares during the Great Recession at its all-time low in 2009, is up 7 times since then. American Express stock is up about 5 times since Warren Buffett's investment in 2008. Bank of America Corporation pays Berkshire Hathaway about $300 million a year and Berkshire Hathaway has the option of buying more shares for just $7 a piece, which is less than half its current value. And of course, Goldman Sachs pays out $500 million in dividends a year to Berkshire Hathaway and also offered a $500 million redemption bonus for repurchasing their shares. As for more recent ventures, Berkshire Hathaway has partnered up with 3G Capital to merge J.H. Heinz and a Kraft Food Company to create Kraft Heinz Food Company. The new company is the third largest food company in North America and the fifth largest food company in the world and boasts an annual revenue of over $28 billion. In 2017, he bought a significant chunk of Pilot Travel Centers, owners of Pilot J chain of truck stops. Berkshire Hathaway will become the majority holder of this company in just a six year time period. So as it is clear, while Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway may have seen some trouble, they're obviously doing very well and growing still at a very rapid pace. You may have wondered why Berkshire Hathaway stock is so expensive. Most of you guys probably inferred or guessed that this is simply because the company has yet to been split into more stocks. But why has Warren Buffett not authorized the Class A split as of now? Well, his answer is to avoid speculation in day trading and attract long-term investors. According to the dictionary, speculation involves trading a financial instrument involving high risk and expectation of significant returns. Speculation can cause inflation of stock prices due to high interest on a specific stock. Stock prices would suddenly increase due to the high interest placed on them, but once the interest slowly fades away, the stock prices will plummet. This is similar to what happened with Bitcoin just last year. Bitcoin values skyrocketed as GPU miners really wanted them and many people were investing in it, but as the fad died out, Bitcoin's value halved in a matter of weeks. By breaking a Berkshire Hathaway stock, this would garner a lot of attention to the company and would make it accessible to hundreds of thousands of more people, which would most certainly inflate the stock price, creating a misrepresentatively high value. Warren Buffett doesn't want to deal with speculative prices and prefers that Berkshire Hathaway remains a significant investment. He's afraid that by splitting his stock, this would attract day traders who are trying to make a quick buck. He has always viewed Berkshire Hathaway's investors as partners of the company and not just investors of a public company. 
As a result, he wants them to stick around and stay invested. Buying and selling Berkshire Hathaway stock is a big decision, like going to college or buying a house. So you are likely to think a lot before coming to a consensus. And you're more likely to base your decision on what that stock will do over a long period of time rather than what it will do tomorrow or even the next hour. But considering that this stock is only traded between 300 to 400 people a day, obviously not that many people prefer to do so. And that is exactly Buffett's intention. He wants long-term investors who are dedicated and trust the company. He is looking for long-term investors and a high entry price is the perfect way to track that demographic. However, Warren Buffett did authorize a Class B split a couple of years ago that made each stock valued at 1 30th of a full stock. The split was authorized to prevent fund managers from setting up mutual fund sort of like structure that sells slices of Class A stock. Furthermore, the lower price of the Class B stock makes it suitable to gauge the value of the market. Class A stock is simply too expensive and traded too sparsely to make it a good candidate for an effective index component. But in the end, this is why the main Berkshire Hathaway stock is so expensive. Warren Buffett, on the other hand, doesn't act like a billionaire and stays far away from a lavish lifestyle. He takes a very modest salary of $100,000 when considering how much value he has created and he takes joy in the simplest things in life such as eating at McDonald's. He still drives himself to work every single day in a used car and lives in a very humble house that he bought decades ago in 1958 for $31,500. He has pledged most of his wealth to charity and is very encouraging of people trying to invest and create a better life for themselves. While Berkshire Hathaway has humble beginnings, after 40 years of strategic acquisitions and efficient problem solving, Warren Buffett's work has resulted in a global conglomerate without match that stays true to its modest roots. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next and make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Also, make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.